What is going on everyone? This is Jake here from We Trade HQ. I'm joined with Tom again, a retired institutional trader. Today we're gonna to be talking about options, what options are, we're gonna be talking about calls, puts, and just an overall introduction to options. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. All right, so we have three main topics we wanna to cover when it comes to options. What options are, what are calls, and what are puts. Now Tom, from my amateur definition, um, I would say when, uh, when it comes to options, you're betting on a underlying stock or, or whatever you're buying the option on, but you're betting on a future price. You're buying a contract saying, hey, this is gonna be at X price at a future date. Um, but I know, I know I'm sure you could explain it a lot better. Yeah, I, I mean an option a little bit different uh, than a stock. An option you only own for a certain amount of time, and that's what mm -hmm. people have to remember. You own the underlying, which is the, the stock. You can buy the stock, pay full value for it, and you own it for the life of the stock. Yep. For an option, options are uh, on an expiry basis, on a month-by-month -month basis. Now, you can buy uh, an option that's got a year expiry, mm -hmm. a one-month expiry. So the options are, are expire on the third Friday of each month. That's the uh, North American way. They're American style. They can be exercised uh, to buy or sell the stock at any point during that options life. Mm -hmm. um, the important thing to remember is <clears throat> when you're buying these options, there's another portion to them, the extrinsic value that um, can decay. And that extrinsic value can be its, its volatility, more importantly though, it's time value, yep. time to expiration. Um, and these all come into factor um, as the weeks uh, move on and, and move closer to expiration. So yeah, guys, when, when, you, when you purchase an options contract, it does decay in value over time. And I wanna let you guys know that because when you buy a stock, you, you have it forever, right? That's right. Um, now I wanted to go back to what is it, so, so you, have, you buy your options contract, what does it mean to exercise? Sure. Yeah. So an option, uh, when you're buying an option, um, along with the, its symbol, uh, it, there's a note for the month of expiration. Yep. So let's say we're buying the Apple uh, August 207 and a half call. <clears throat> so we're buying uh, the Apple option, uh, its expiration is the third Friday okay. in August, and its strike price, which is very important, 207.50. If we're buying a call, yep. our, our bet is that the stock, uh, the underlying stock, is going to finish at higher than $207.50. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's that basic. Now, what comes into that is the premium you may pay to get that right to purchase stock at 207.50. Mm -hmm. So you also have to bring that uh, in, in, into your uh, equation. But exercising stock, if I'm exercising stock and it's a call, the call gives me, the 207 and a half call gives me the right to exercise, to call in stock at 207.50 from the person uh, the other side of that contract, the seller yep. of, of the call. So I will own the stock and have to pay for the stock yep. uh, at 207.50. For a put, uh, gives me the right to sell or to put the stock to the seller of the put mm -hmm. uh, at 207.50. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, hoping uh, that uh, you know the stock moves lower with a put, and it, the stock's trading at 200. I have the right now to put that stock at 207.50 to the opposite side of that contract. Okay, right on. So uh, within that uh, explanation, you know, we, we mentioned calls and puts, and when basically when you're purchasing uh, an option contract, you can either buy a call, a call or a put. Now, a call, you're betting that the stock is going to go up in value. Correct. And then a, a put is you're betting the stock is going to go down in value. Correct. And from what you just said, we're comparing that with the strike price. Correct. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, each option has a strike price, and the strike price is the price that you can sell mm -hmm. in a put or buy if it's a call. Mm -hmm. That's the price you can you, you can transact at. Awesome. Okay, perfect. And and there's two ways to profit from options. You can just the premium. You could you could buy an options contract, sell it at a higher premium. Correct. And slash or um, you could exercise to get that underlying stock correct at your desired price if it's in the money. Now, now, what are the differences between in the money at and out of the money? Because I think we haven't explained that yet. Sure. <clears throat> For a call, um, we'll and again we'll use the two hundred seven and a half uh, Apple call just yeah. just for the purposes of this discussion. Um, if Apple is trading. Under 207 and a half, okay, so the underlying stock is under 207 and a half, it is deemed out of the money. Mm -hmm. At the money is, is Apple trading at 207 and a half. In the money is anything higher than 207.50. Okay. For the call, for the put, sorry, it would be the exact opposite. So for a put trading anywhere above 207 and a half, mm -hmm. it would be out of the money. 207 and a half in the money. Less than two hundred seven and a half, it would be deemed in the money. Gotcha. And you can only exercise if you're in the money. Is that you correct? could exercise actually if it's out of the money, but that would never make sense because you you would lose it. Yeah, you're yeah you would be losing. So it, it doesn't yep. you know when you could sell the, the the stock or buy the stock in the open market at a better price, why would you exercise? Exactly. So when you're buying an options contract. Um, if you're out of the money, um, it's 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 worthless. At expiration, at expiration, okay. it's worthless. During the life of your option, it may actually trade at a higher price because uh, again, uh, there is the thought that the market may move that way, the stock price may fluctuate, mm -hmm. um, maybe earnings are coming uh, soon, and you know the thought is in the market that there's. Uh, going to be a, a movement in the stock. What some people actually look at, oh, there's been an influx of call buying at this strike price that is right now slightly out of the money. Okay. And you know, what are the reasons for that? Gotcha. Okay. And one thing I wanted to add as well is when you own the option, you don't get dividend payments. Is that that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So that's something to think about um, if you're looking to, to use that as a vehicle yes. for, for profits. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all of our topics today for options. I hope we covered everything. Um, in conclusion, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to say that I would like to continue, uh, to discuss, um, awesome. options and option strategy on a step by step basis in a progressively more in depth manner that will include different strategies will include, um, spreads, whether they be calendar spreads or buy rights, unwinds, married puts, straddles, so on and so forth. But yeah. I need your feedback um, totally. from your audience to tell me uh, if you'd like to continue. No, totally. Once again, thank you, Tom. Um, as you guys heard from Tom, we need your positive feedback on this video. Um, you know, we want to have Tom on again on the future for our videos. So we need to know that the content we're producing you know, is valuable if you guys see value in that. So um, I'm gonna leave you guys with a question, a personal question, I guess. Do you trade options? Do you see value in trading options? And if you do, or if you don't, please leave a comment and a like and let us know, because uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to, to talk to you guys. So with everything said, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.